when it comes to college basketball, we enter, we get, we enter a new year. Um, so we're transitioning into a new year, and what this means is that conference play is fully starting up, not not partially, you know, like in the early weeks of December. You no, know, we're fully getting on with it, and it is an intriguing week. An intriguing week. Hopefully, um, you know, COVID does not, you know, get out of hand because it has gotten out of hand in some cases. Um, some games have probably been canceled. The games I might even be talking about are canceled, um, you know, by this week too. So, I mean, I, I, I genuinely don't know what's going to happen this week, in all honesty. But... We know who the number one team is. That's Baylor. We know that there's going to be plenty of teams, you know, ranked in the top 25. We know there's going to be some teams that are left out, you know, that probably should be ranked, you know. Um, and again, COVID just really, you know, just messed everything up, you know. Like, um, the Arizona schools, um, Arizona State had to cancel, they had to cancel a game because, like, the power in their arena was out for some reason. So. You know that that's crazy. Like both Arizona schools have suffered some losses. Um, Arizona State, obviously, with this weird, you know, um, bizarre result here. The Arizona lost to Tennessee, but Tennessee's offense isn't that good. Like, it, like if you watch the Tennessee Arizona game, you know that. Tennessee was up early. It felt like Tennessee was about to whip Arizona by like 30 points, but the balls let them back in it because the ball's offense is just not there. It's not there. We saw it against Texas Tech. It's not there. Uh, honestly, Tennessee, you know, they have a, they have a defense that can play, but, you know, they, they almost let Arizona win. You know, they almost let Arizona win, and they can't have they can't have these types of things happen in SEC play. You know, speak of SEC play, they'll be taking on Alabama this week, so it'll be intriguing to see how Alabama, you know, gets back into it. You know, Tennessee and Alabama, two teams all on different strokes right now. Like Alabama's lost a couple of games, you know, over the past couple of weeks. You know, after you know recording some huge victories, uh, Tennessee again, you know, they don't have much. But they have something. They have something again. That Arizona game, winning that game was huge for Tennessee. Huge. Um, and again, you know, the cancellations are just getting out of hand at this point. Um, if you wanted to watch some basketball on Christmas, no, <laughs> you didn't get to. Um, like two of the Diamond Head Classic games that were scheduled for Christmas got canceled. There were games getting canceled throughout the week. There's games getting canceled right now. I mean, luckily there is no games scheduled for today. You know, we can reevaluate and look at things right now because, man, the way things are right now, it's a little crazy. So, you know, it's a little crazy. Uh, there's really only a couple of conferences that I want to focus on this week. Uh, Big East, Big 12, and SEC. Um... You know, there's also, you know, again, there's really only a couple games that I can say uh, from this week that hopefully should be played again. You know, hopefully these games should be played. And if not, you know, I, I, I just don't know at this point. Um, so Baylor and Iowa State is a big one. You know, both these teams are undefeated. If we get to New Year's Day, you know, you know, just nice and easy, but... COVID, again, COVID's not making this easy. You know, look out for Isaiah Brockington for uh, Iowa State. He's really been the guy that's been stepping up. I know I talked about another guy on this Iowa State team earlier in the season, but I had watched an Iowa State game yet. We will this week. We will. I guarantee you that, you know, here on the channel. I guarantee you that. Again, Baylor is just beyond talented. I mean, you know, I believe they lost. I, I'm not sure if they lost some guys in injury, but I think that was more Houston. Yeah, yeah, Houston. Speaking of Houston, real quick, no Marcus Sasser, no Tremont Mark. I mean, both those guys are tremendous athletes. Like, I was very surprised that both those guys got injured. Now that opens things up a little bit because now, you know, Houston's lost both of their top 
two of their top players. Like, like uh, I, I genuinely don't know. You know what's going to happen now? Is somebody else in the American going to rise up? Because nobody in the American has really anything, you know, at all either, as far as resumes go. So we'll see what happens. You know, there. Um, again, Baylor Iowa State is a big one, big big time game. You know, personally, you know, Iowa State should be in the top ten. You know, this week, if I'm not mistaken, they might already be, but I don't think so. Yeah, they are number nine, so they should rise up a little bit higher, in my opinion. And you know, hopefully they do. Uh, you know, again, this is a talented Iowa State squad that can play some damn good defense. They held some teams to under 40 points. You know, too. Yeah, it's not the best teams. They held some teams under 40 points this year. And Baylor, we know. We know Baylor can play. They haven't played since December the 20th. They do have a game on Tuesday before the Iowa State game on Saturday. Iowa State, on the other hand, I don't think they have anything before the Baylor game. Yeah, they don't. Um, so, you know, it's, it's going to be intriguing because, I mean, this Iowa State um, offense is, you know, they're all right. They're, they're all right. You know, the defense is that pretty good. They've held a couple teams under 50 points, held them, you know, you know under 60, under 50, under 62, you know. I mean, you know, in, in that range of, you know, I mean, this is a good Iowa State team. I can, That's all I can say here. Um, so, you know, the Big 12 is looking like it's going to be a gauntlet again this year, you know. As we transition into conference play, I think the Big 12 is going to be a huge gauntlet. Also, keep your eyes on Texas and West Virginia. I know West Virginia fans have been kind of, you know, aching for getting a ranking. They they really should, you know, be ranked. Um, you know, and West Virginia, you know, is a good team. You know, we all know this. Um, they don't have any, you know, West Virginia doesn't have a game until the uh, first Saturday of the new year. That is January 1st, obviously. And Texas has another uh, game before, so yeah. So keep your eyes on Texas and West Virginia. We'll see how Dylan Disu plays. You know, he's he's been he's been stepping it up lately for Texas. I really I really think so. Like just one of those guys, you know, that has been stepping up. I mean, I mean again, Texas's offense is not good. You know, not a good offense at all. It is a really, really rough offense to be watching under Chris Beard, and I just don't understand it, you know, at this time. Um, and in the Big East, the Big East really is going to be one of the bigger stories of the week. You know, UConn taking on Xavier, Seton Hall potentially taking on Providence because Seton Hall had to cancel some games. Uh, and then Seton Hall, Villanova. Villanova, you know, not that great of a team this year, in all honesty. You know, they've had some really rough losses so far you know and they're they're just sitting there they're technically like number five in the big east right now because again bill Nova's played some games in conference already um they've won they won one and one of those conference games so far and the 20 game schedule of the big east is a grind it is going to be a huge grind again i providence is 11 and one right now and it's just gonna be a huge week for them uh, we already talked. We already talked a little bit about Providence before. They had a big victory against the UConn. If, let's see if they could get a big victory against Seton Hall. We'll see if Seton Hall can get it together. You know, because again, they've had games canceled left and right. They haven't played since December the 12th. So um, we'll see what Seton Hall can do. Because they got they got to get something together. They got to get something together. Um, LSU and Auburn, as we transition back over to the SEC real quick, um, LSU Auburn's going to be really, really intre interesting. I'll tell you that much. Jabari Smith um, for the Tigers, for the Tigers of Auburn, not the Tigers of LSU. Um, this this Auburn team is looking pretty legit. You know, again, the SEC is looking pretty legit this year. You know, again, I. I, I it did kind of you know lambast Tennessee for you know their non their, their their schedule again you know Tennessee just really hasn't had too much but they but they gained a huge victory again like I said against Arizona um, Kentucky still Kentucky you, we know that um, Arkansas tended to Auburn you know Auburn and LSU you know two top teams in the SEC right now 
you know, based on record at least, because Auburn only has one loss. LSU has none, so undefeated LSU Tigers. All these undefeated Tigers of LSU. Oh boy, it's a big, it's gonna be a big week. I'll tell you, I'll tell you that much for LSU. Um, Darius Days, you know, this is this is, again, this is an LSU team that you know they have a center, they have a couple forwards, they they do a, uh, you know, usually it'd be like a couple guards, you know, it's forwards, but they have a true, you know, center, two forwards and two guards rotation. And they got a, they got a, this LSU team looks pretty talented, I'll tell you that much again. Um, so it's going to be an interesting battle, you know, inside Jabari Smith, Darius Days. I'm not sure, you know, who he's going to be, match I'm not sure who Jabari Smith's going to be matched up with, I'll tell you that much right now. Um, so this will be an intriguing, intriguing first time seeing LSU play this year because, I mean, this team probably should be a little bit higher. At number 17, we'll see where they move up this week. Again, they have a win against Georgia Tech. They have a win against Wake Forest. They have a win against Penn State. And, yeah, that, that's about it. And Belmont as well. Belmont and Liberty as well. You know, Also two pretty good teams. So, you know, LSU's resume right now is looking pretty nice, you know. Pretty nice for a team that's undefeated, 12-0. And, and there's still, a, again, there's still a long season to go, you know. Of course, there's a few SEC games before the Big 12 SEC Challenge, which will be a big topic when it comes to uh, that week of um, January 29th. Yeah, that'll be a big that'll be a big week for me. I'll tell you that much. I'm gonna be watching those challenge games the entire day. Um, but that's not right now, though. That's not right now. But LSU and Auburn, again, both these teams have pretty impressive resumes so far. I think this is gonna be one of the best games of the week. So tune into that on Wednesday, of course. You know, tune into couple of games that are on New Year's Day and again hopefully we don't get any more you know well I mean we're probably gonna get some COVID you know cancellations I'm sure this game's gonna be canceled right now like I said but you know if we if we have the games we have or at least the ones I've talked about at least you know we have these games this week it's gonna be one hell of a week to start conference play I cannot wait to get to it and I'll, I'll see you all again um, next week, you know, next Sunday, to talk more college basketball. Uh, again, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a huge first couple weeks of conference play. I'll tell you that much. Okay. We'll see who starts to separate themselves from others. Take care, everybody.